In this episode, we'll take a look at how we design and size a big data cluster. Because we like visualizations, let's start with this fella called Guybrush. Guybrush got hired to be a core in our big data cluster, and his job will be to, let's say, peel potatoes. Let's get cracking, Guybrush. Of course, this will not be the only potato he needs to peel. There'll be tons more. Let's be nice guys and give him a bucket full of them so he doesn't need to get up for each potato. This bucket does for Guybrush the job of a spindle. All right, let's get to it. Okay, I think we can pretty quickly see that Guybrush's workspace could use some temporary storage solution. Why don't we give him a table? This table is his RAM. Now Guybrush has everything he needs to get the job done. Man, Guybrush, that bending down for every potato doesn't look so ergonomic. We care about ergonomics at the workplace. Why don't you use that temporary storage you have there more wisely? There you go. Okay, great. We've got the job figured out. Now, since we care about speed, we'll make the work surface bigger and give Guybrush some colleagues. We found a nice 256 gigabyte table on Craigslist that has enough space for 16 workers. And because 256, coincidentally, divides so evenly by 16, this means that each core gets a 16 gigabyte slice of the table to work with. Now we just need more buckets. Hmm, I see what you did there. Trying to cut some corners, eh? How about we don't skimp around here? A big data cluster is all about speed, and we don't want any heads banging into one another while trying to get potatoes out of the same bucket, do we? That's better. Okay. Yes, this is working. Now we can scale this up a bit. These 16 cores, 256 gigabytes of RAM, and 16 spindles make up one node. And 16 has kind of been a theme here, so let's build an office with 16 nodes and connect them all with a fast network, say 10 gigabit. And there you have it, a beautiful, smoothly working big data cluster. Don't stop now, Guybrush. <laughs> Attaboy. <laughs>